I am John McClure of Reverend and the Makers. It's been a couple of years since you've last toured as Reverend of the Makers. How's it been so far? It's been it's been all right. Like we weren't sure after the last album, the second album, if anyone had still be bothered. But I did this thing called RSS, and yeah. then start getting a little vibe again, and come back with this record, and we've just gone on from there, and it's just spreading, man, from like kind of almost being finished to just being on the up again, and we're playing venues that are like selling out and yeah. up north, massive places, and. You know, I've got a mixtape, what's kicking off, everything's nice, man, you can hear it rattling, rattling the, the walls. Yeah. So, like you said, you had RSS before this album came out. You also had another side, cre uh, side project called Mongrel. Yeah. Man. Are any of those two still? No, Mongrel's finished because I've said my political thing. Everybody knows what I think politically. And if I labour it any more, then I'll be labelled as a political artist. And I don't, I make too good, my music's too good to be like put into a corner like yeah. that. So I now. My mission now is to prove to people that like, I can write proper tunes constantly, bang, bang, bang. And yeah. I've only just started doing it really last year or so, but I'm in a good place to found me like sweet spot music, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so the, the third album's a bit more sort of dancier than the yeah, other two. What it, was yeah. the sort of thinking behind that? What I wanted to do is with this album is take the sound of our band, which is sort of like danceable indie music, which might remind people of them bands who did that in the past, right? Take that, but marry it with like bass culture and bass music, yeah. but write songs with it crucially, and not just it be some mean, horrible beat, but it'd be like, you know, a song, but also with that bass thing. Yeah. You can hear yourself, it bangs, it, it like grinds, but there's lyrics and there's chord changes and stuff. Yeah. And I just think that's what like music's got to sound like. It's, it's actually music, evolve. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's musicality, but also it, it, it's not like, I don't like music that's like falsely retro and sort of yeah. ignorant to the fact that music has evolved and people do use synthesizers and laptops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But you could still the same way write a song. So it's that interplay yeah. between them, you know. So is your set list dominated by the third album or? Um, lots of first albums. I think first album rework sort of marries well with the third album. Yeah. But it's a bit of a mixture really. It's a bit of a greatest hit set if you like. I've three albums worth, you know, I'm only 30 but I've had three albums with this band already. So I think like we've got just a great set and it's a party man, people absolutely love it, it's been yeah. amazing and you know normally you have like a mosh pit and gigs, the whole of the crowd's just been bouncing, going nuts and we go outside after, yeah. do that acoustic thing, it's wicked. Yeah. So um, you used to do, before the album and the tour, you used to do webcam sessions? Little yeah, little webcam. Are they going to carry on? Yeah, just I think like the mainstream so bland and so dull, the Radio 1, X Factor yeah. to this world, they're so boring that like, Nobody swears, nobody has an opinion, nobody ever says anything that's of any in any way, shape or form of interest to anybody. Yeah. Like, you know, what Nick Grimshaw and Kate Moss get up to is of no relevance to 14 year old girls in Carlisle, it's just not. You know what I mean? So I just kind of started doing Ustream things and just getting people around me out who are talented and just saying, look, there are other people out there who have an alternative yeah. and I'm just doing a short notice, we'd have four or five thousand people watching us any one given time, which is, you know, great. Yeah. I think it's quite punk, innit? That's what I like about you, stream and Twitter yeah, definitely. and them things. You don't need anyone else, just do it yourself, your own yeah. industry, you know, your own your own kind of energies and what have you. And I think, hopefully, I'd like to think that to bands coming up, that's empowering. Yeah. Just fucking get on with it, mate. You know what I mean? So, as you said about Radio 1, you had a bit of sort of a clash with Chris Moyles on Twitter. I had a clash with Chris what Moyles was, on Twitter. What was that all about? I put on Twitter, Moyles asked about you shut up and play a record. So he said, as about you make a good one, and I will. To which I replied, listen mate, I'll be around a long time after Radio 1 decide that a 45 year old man playing pop records to little girls is gash. Notoriously, a distracting. <laughs> Funny that, eh? Do you reckon that was down to you? Funny that, eh? <laughs> Coincidence, perhaps. But, listen, I'm a man who tells truth and that's not very popular in today's music industry because yeah. they want a load of Muppets who like Serriana's brilliant and Jesse J's brilliant. But I fucking won't lose the shit. Yeah. Right? So I just tell truth, yeah. brother, and I like, have a laugh with it and take yeah. piss. And I think, like, that's the way the music industry is only going to survive is by people having a bit of independence about yeah. of thought, mind, action and music, you know what I mean? So nobody's going to tell me what to say. Never. And, so, uh, and like, Moyles, you know, he plays this, used to play the script and One Direction and stuff, and then he wants to, to stand out in judgement of my music and tell me whether I make good music or yeah. not. Nah, mate. It's not right. I'm not having it. I'm not having it. You know what I mean? Like, fucking... Noel Gallagher or Damon Albarn or like James Murphy yeah. or like Damien Marley or something. If they yes. said to me, I think your music's shit, I'd be like, alright, well, like, Liam Howler, yeah, get alright, then yeah. fair enough, man. 
because you're a fucking geezer yourself and you've made some brilliant music. Yeah. I'm having Chris Moyles fucking tell me what, if we've ever made good music or not. Yeah. I don't believe him and I don't believe Nick Grimshaw either. He's a, he's a professional presenter, he doesn't know nothing about music. You know more about music than Nick Grimshaw, I know for a fact you do. I don't know what to think so. <laughs> you see what I'm saying to you though? Yeah. And there, there you're getting this, this juxtaposition where people are just like, yeah, this is boring, man. Yeah. Everyone's bored of, bored of mainstream, they're bored of pop music, bordering. Yeah. And that's why ultimately they'll return to bands like mine because they want songs that are about the lives and that yeah. means something to their everyday life. I'm going to work fucking five days out of seven. You know what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Like, so Gangnam Style means fuck all to me, mate. Whereas, like, heavyweight champion of the world or shine a light about buying a lottery ticket, that's, yeah. that's my life because I do it every day. And it's everyone else's life, and ultimately that lives on in people's hearts, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. So, on Twitter as well, you also sort of had a bit of banter with Example and Calvin Harris. What's example that? I like, there's no beef with Example. That's piss taking, that's yeah. funny, like, yeah, we get on, he's cool. Like, um, He's a nice lad example, he's a great guy, like, I yeah. like him a lot and I think where he deals with like, people giving him shit on Twitter is kind of funny. So, example's alright, he's a nice lad. Um, Calvin Harris, I think, makes terrible music <laughs> and I'm not afraid to tell him so. And I think that headline the live music festival playing CDs over people's music yeah. and just standing there. I think he's taking piss. It's not the, not I think right, he's yeah. taking piss. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. When there's bands in practice rooms who are genius are starving while he's making tunes with Rihanna and dancing yeah. around with a pineapple in it, like, oh, he's on X Factor. <laughs> like if I had Rihanna on my tune, mate, and I had a pineapple on my head on X Factor, <laughs> I'd be playing a uh, lead, lead gig at Team Nepal, but I've got a bit of dignity, bro. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, um, you've played a few sort of high profile gigs in your past supporting Oasis and Noel. Yeah. Would you reckon they'll get to, back together? Do I think Oasis will get back yes. together? Oh, to send it, innit? I have to ask no one really, I don't really ask him that. Yeah. Trying like, not to fucking do it me, so I just like sit with him and talk about some other shit to him. Yeah. But yeah, I'd like it if they did, because they're great, aren't they? But same way Noel's good on his own, you know, Noel's yeah. got a style, man. Yeah. And he's, he's been good to me, Noel, because I think he sees that we're trying to do it properly. I don't like to think he thinks we're all right people, we're trying to do it honestly and in the right way and stuff. And yeah. obviously he came around in a generation when you could say what the fuck you wanted and people would love you for, for it. Yeah. Whereas unfortunately I'm in a generation where people don't buy records and if you have an opinion they think you're some kind of nutter. <laughs> See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I've got a good Liam Gallagher story for you. This is how Liam Gallagher susses out and the people are alright. Right. right. So playing some we were ways and I'm like in dressing room like this, right? And he comes up to me and goes, What's your baby type of pee? So I goes like, oh uh yeah. Guarded. Like, don't you like mushy? Like, dead, dead aggro and that. And I'm like, yeah, they're all right, but I prefer guarded. You're all right, you want? <laughs> you want to see how that works? You see how that works? Because if I had then gone, no, actually, I, yeah, when he'd gone, don't you like mushy? And I'd have gone, oh, yeah, I do, they're better than guarded. He'd have thought I were a dickhead. And he'd have been right to think so. <laughs> but I stuck to my guns, guarded. Therefore, he must have thought, oh, well, good on you. Yeah. See how that works? Good test that. I'm going to try and start trying that, people. Tell the Christian like. Clear this. Sure you don't like Monster Munch? <laughs> so, um, what sort of advice would you give to young upcoming bands? My advice to upcoming bands was, yes, was sir. would be, see this pop thing what's in now. Right. All over Radio 1. Press agree. Get her. Jesse G. All that turd. <laughs> Don't watch it. Don't watch it. Don't have anything to do with it. Actively don't be that. Yeah. Because it's on its fucking way out, mate. Because it's been rubbish for a minute and everyone's really bored of it. And if you saw the Olympic closing ceremony, mm. everyone was just like, this, 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 this doesn't represent me. Frankie Boyle summed up our nation. And then a week later, he's like, here's what we do now. Trot out a load of bollocks like Jesse Jane and body stocking. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, if you're in a band now, create something original and you yeah. can get on the internet and start building it yeah. and, and form an alternative to this shy what's in now because that's that that, that, that that don't deserve to, to sum up your generation, does it? No, not at all. Do you know what I mean? Like, like not what's been in the past as well. I was lucky enough to be like 16, 15 when Britpop were happening, 17, 18. Yeah. I'm really great times, man. I'm 30 now, right? But if you're 17, 18 now, you don't want to think that your generation is summed up by this fucking load of shit that's in charge, do you? No. It's atrocious, man. And there's odd, decent band around, yeah, but there's no like movement of people, is there? So I think ultimately it's going to have to change. So young bands have got to just stick to their own thing and not watch that pop bubble because it's about to pop massively. Yeah. So back to the Reverend and the Makers. What is your favourite track to play live? What's my favourite Reverend and the Makers track to play live? Yeah. Sex with the X, we haven't been playing it for ages and it's a ballad. Yeah. 
Yeah. And everything else in sets pretty banging. Is that one in the set? Yeah, yeah. Balladeering. Although I need to get rid of this darn coal because it's <laughs> clogging up my shit. Nice and nice. <laughs> um, so, who would you say is your favourite unsigned act at the minute? Who's my favourite unsigned act at the minute? Um, band called Moore and Fraser King, I'm gonna say more Mary, that's one of the songs. Band called Fraser King in Manchester, I yeah. think are really good, they're great. There's a lad called William Barstow in Sheffield, right. makes great music. And there's a band in Sheffield called Love Boat. They used to be called, one of the lad lead singers used to be in a band called Rumpers, mm. who were, they were genius. And Love Boat are amazing, he's a bit of a genius, a bit of a, yeah. like a Sheffield Frank Zappa or something. Proper dude, like, you know. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. So just some quick ones now. All Gigging right. or festivals? <laughs> Festivals. No more Liam. No. Beer or spirits? Spirits. City or United? United. Corey or EastEnders? Corey. Big venues or intimate gigs? Intimate gigs. Yeah. Fair enough. Right, to finish off, last one. The best joke you know. <laughs> What'd you get if you have a oregano on your hand? Don't know. Herbie Hancock. <laughs> 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 